Hi, my name is Paul Gilligan, and I'm a cartoonist, and more recently, an author. I wrote a book, and it's called Dogman. No, not really, sorry. I wrote a book, and it's called King of the Mole People. Here it is right here. I do write and draw a comic strip about dogs, which is called Pooch Cafe. I've been doing that for like 20 years. It features a little dog named Poncho. It looks like this. If you recognize him, you're my favorite person. It's uh, about dogs and their perspective living among the humans. They can't understand why humans don't eat all the food in the fridge or why they accept having uh, cats living among them, which they refer to as a fuzzy virus. They hang out in a secret cafe and talk about the embarrassment of toilet breath and how to get a pizza delivered. Here's an example. This is the very first pooch cafe that ever ran. I've got it hanging on my wall for posterity. Poncho and his friend are at the dump and he says, All right, a can of beef stew and almost full. Poncho says, Hey, don't put that in your mouth. You don't know where it's been. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, that was rich. Pour me some, will you? Poncho. Uh, I've also got a couple of uh, collections. Um, this one's called All Dogs Naturally Know How to Swim. You can see it's wearing floaties. And uh, no collar, no service. <clears throat> uh, more recently though, as I mentioned, I've written my first book. It's a heavily illustrated middle grade book called King of the Mole People. It's about a boy named Doug Underbelly who's just trying to fit in at school and be normal. And this becomes more difficult when, against his will, he is made king of a group of muddy underground dwellers called moles who live in his backyard uh, below the ground. And the moles are just the uh, creatures on the first level. There's giant slugs, mushroom folks, stone goons, mega worms. The layers go down and down, and there's plenty of unrest between them. So now Doug has to uh, find a way to manage all of these creatures, as well as maintaining the illusion of normality at school. Because the problem is weirdness attracts more weirdness, and poor Doug Underbelly is a weirdness magnet. I'll read a little excerpt. This is uh, going to be from chapter three. This is where Doug first meets the, uh, the mole people, first goes down into the realm. Um, sorry, he doesn't meet them for the first time, but this is the first time in the book we see them meeting. <clears throat> Uh, he's been made king at this point, and um, he's not too happy about it. Uh, tilt like this, so you can see the cover while I read. <clears throat> Chapter 3, Underground. The moment I dropped into the hole, two things were waiting for me. One was a huge mud puddle, and the other was Oog. Oog is a mole person, one of my royal guards, and seeing me land splat in a mud puddle caused him to burst into laughter. You might think the comedy value of someone falling in mud would have worn off for mole people. But you'd be wrong. Mole people have a terrible sense of humor. In case you don't know what a mole person looks like, and why would you, this is one here. After getting hold of his laughter, Oob remembered that I'm his king, and he dropped to his knees to grovel and praise my name. All hail King Doug, said Oog. Okay, I'm here, I growled. I got the message, all 50 of them. So here I am, your king. King had a bad day, said Oog, back on his feet. As a matter of fact, King did have a bad day. Not a single thing went right. And this crown is so heavy, it's crushing the bones in my neck. Ha ha ha, laughed Oog. What's so funny about that, I demanded. Sorry, Oog remembered when King fall in mud. I told him I knew the deal. I see a crown symbol, I come to the mole throne. I didn't need crowns all over creation. Okay, I found this on the web, for I see a crown symbol. Check it out. <laughs> oh, thanks, Siri. In case you forgot, I'm trying to keep this mole king business hush-hush up there. I said, what's the big idea with the tunnel? Uh, Oog only draw crowns. Oog make tunnel. Oog, said Bugo, appearing from the shadows. Oog had large hands and a smoother body that aided his role as master digger. I couldn't tell much from him, though. Most moles seem to speak English, or upspeak, as they call it, on some level, and Boo understood it, but all he ever said was, Boog. He fell on his knees and groveled and, I'm guessing, praised. Boog. That's enough of the falling on the knees, I said. I already told you, it makes me very uncomfortable. King in bad mood, Boog said to Boo. I'm not in a bad mood, I yelled. It's just, I'm supposed to be forbidden for moles to let upworlders know of your existence. Well, what do you think they're going to say if they start seeing tunnels appearing and disappearing? 
Wu whispered something to Bugo and pointed at the mud puddle I'd fallen in earlier, and they both laughed. Why is that so funny? I yelled. You guys are covered in mud all the time. Oog not know, Oog shrugged. King somehow do it funnier. I didn't get why more people thought I was funny, but I, I'd have killed for laughs like that back in class. Look, can we just get on with this, I said, over the cracking of my neck bones. It's been a rough day. Oog came over to me. Oog, sorry. King tell Oog all about bad day King having up world, and Oog listen. King not leave out any details. There's no time for that, said Pugo, appeared from the shadows. Mole people generally appeared from the shadows. Plugo was the third member of my royal guard. He looks pretty much the same as the other two, only more squished. There's not a whole lot of distinction between mole people. Here are the three royal guards with the differences pointed out. Oops, sorry. Yeah, here. Plugo, Bugo, and Oog. Plugo was the head of my royal guard. You could tell because he had more O's in his name. In mole culture, the more O's in your name, the higher your station. His command of the upspeak was better than Oob's, but he spoke quite quickly, as if upspeak disturbed his mouth, and constantly looking around to see, uh, looking around like a kid who'd been made the lookout in a bank job that had started to go wrong. Despite being the head guard, Plugo seemed less respectful of my role as king than the other two. <clears throat> his fall to his knees and all hail King Doug was half-hearted and with no groveling whatsoever. You're needed in the royal court immediately, said Plugo, and stop asking about the upworld, guard mole Oog. That's a violation of mole law. Plugo in bad mood, said Oog. I'm not in a bad mood, said Plugo. Krugoluth is in a bad mood. It seemed like bad moods were running rampant. Although, to be honest, Krugoluth was always in a bad mood. Krugoluth was my royal advisor which, as you can tell from the number of O's in his name, was a higher rank than my guards. He had six O's. Apparently the old king had sixteen. They wanted to start calling me King Doog, but I put a royal halt to that. King say crown hurt neck, said Oog. It sure does, I agreed. It weighs like fifty pounds. The crown must be worn at all times while in the mole world, said Plugu. But it looks ridiculous. Why is it so tall when you all live in low ceiling tunnels? It keeps getting knocked off by stalagmites. That's stalactites, my mistake. Insulting the crown is a violation of the Moa law, said Plugu. Plugu was a real stickler for the rules. This love of rules was probably what kept him supporting the crown despite this distaste for who was currently wearing it. Now let's go. There are reports of unrest in the lower levels. Plus, I already mentioned Krugaloo's mood. I'm not going anywhere until I get my new throne pillow, I said. If you assumed a mole throne must be comfortable since it was built for a king, guess again. Almost everything in the mole king was constructed of only three materials, mud, roots, and rock. And I'm pretty sure mole people butts have different anatomy than human butts because even being made of rock didn't account for how utterly painful that throne was to sit on. Oog has new throne pillow for a king, said Oog proudly. You do, I said. Oog made it Oog's self, he beamed, as much as a mole person can beam. It's waiting by the entrance to the big cavern. The king is pleased, I beamed back. Okay, let's get this over with. I retrieved my crown, which had been knocked off by another stalactite. Plugu made a, some grumbling noises, and Bugu said, Boog, and we started off down the tunnel. Yeah, um, that was a little excerpt from King of the Wolf People. I hope you're intrigued by Doug's descent into the lower realms and all the creatures that he's doomed to run into. The sequel is coming out in August, and it's called Rise of the Slugs. And as you may guess, things get even slimier. Thanks for listening to me today, and thanks for VanCat for inviting me to do this. I hope weirdness finds you all in just the right quantities. Keep writing, reading, and drawing, everybody. Cheers.